Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to test the theory right now. What I pulled up is the judicial power for the state of Connecticut because I'm getting ready to help some individuals with their issues that they're having in that state. And I am volunteering. I'm not going to do it for the rest of you guys. I'm volunteering to help these two husband and wife because they have done up to this point what they were told with the exception of a couple of times I had to get on that anus because they decided that they were going tippy toe and not do what they were suggested to do see if I give you advice because you're coming to me for it and you sit up there and you ignore it and you don't do nothing then well, anyway, we don't do that. We don't use that type of language here at this particular channel. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to let that pull up. But I'm going to come back to the uh, site that we were just on. I think I was using this one. Yeah, this is the one. Now, I want you all to follow something. It says, the judicial power of the state shall be vested in a Supreme Court, an appellate court, a superior court. Hey, look, all three courts, appellate, supreme, and superior court. Ooh, that's Connecticut for you. Wait, hold on. A and such lower courts with an S. Wait, 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 hold on. Uh-uh, that got an S. That's a court singular, court singular, court singular. S as the General Assembly shall from time to time ordain and establish. Huh? How can you put the judicial power in all these courts, singular, and then vest it in lower courts, uh-uh, you can't do that. It's the same judicial power. Now, see, a lot of y'all don't understand this. I know it. I can see it went right over y'all heads when I was telling y'all this. Okay, I want y'all to pay attention. Because y'all don't understand about the Constitution and how it was written. So let me show you what the legislature did, okay? We're going to go right here. No, not that one. Not that one. Okay, where's legislature? Because I know it's here. Oh, I done skipped it. I apologize, y'all. I, I had it saved and everything, and then I unsaved it, y'all. Hold on. The legislative power of this state shall be vested in two distinct houses and branches. Legislative vested in two, that means they have equal power. Ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me show you something. If you're going to put the judicial power, because that's the power of the judicial branch, okay, if you're going to vest that power, then that means all of these courts are equal. The Supreme Court, the Appellate Court, and the Superior Court. But I promise you, Connecticut got more than one court that calls itself Superior. Got more than one court that calls itself Appellate, but only has one Supreme Court. So y'all need to understand something here. Y'all need to find out which this Appellate Court that has judicial power. But I would, I would ask that. I'd ask that question of the Supreme Court. The Constitution for the state say judicial power is vested in all these courts. But if it's the same judicial power, then that means y'all all equal. Hold on now. That means they all equal. Their power is equal. The power is not divided, y'all. The House, their power ain't divided. They got the same power, but they share that power. Yeah, that's why you need both houses to the side on the bill. Mm-hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, when I told you, when I read the New Mexico Constitution, it says the judicial power should be vested in one Supreme Court and in other such lower courts as the legislature shall. And General Assembly means the full Congress, both sides, agreeing. Ladies and gentlemen, I noticed this right off the bat. It said singular. And this is still pulling up because this is about, uh, I think, 50 documents pulling up on my PDF. So that, that's just, it's a lot of documents, y'all. The legislative power shall be vested in two distinct houses and branches. Ladies and gentlemen, how can they do that? Because they're two distinct houses. One, a house. The other, a senate. So now that you guys know this, what are you going to do about it? You're going to keep going to these lower inferior courts that don't have any judicial power? Or are you going to write like I did 
2012. The case is still there. Are you going to write like I did and say, hey, hey, what y'all doing? I, I, I'm looking for this uh, judicial branch of government, judicial power, and I can't seem to find it. Can you help me? Yeah, I just need you to direct me where it is. Okay, Connecticut, you guys got gratitudes and the good providence of God. That's your preamble. You, you, you have permitted them to enjoy a free government. Do in order to effectually to define, secure, and perpetuate liberty. Man, then why y'all have so many slaves up there in Connecticut? Oh, I'm sorry, my bad, I'm thinking Kentucky. No, I'm thinking Connecticut too, anyway. And after careful consideration and revision, ordain and establish a federal constitution for the civil government. That means that they're civilians, not citizens. Shh, don't tell nobody. Matter of fact, let me do that. Control F. And we're going to do, watch this, C-I-T-I-Z-E-N, citizen. Every citizen may freely speak. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your problem. On all subjects, why would you want to be a subject? Don't let nobody call you no citizen. This is a representative government in the United States. Don't let nobody call you no citizen. All right. Let's get back to the judicial power. So we know about the legislative power. See, the political power is inherent in the people, a collective group. And all free governments are founded on their authority, the people as a collective group, and instituted on their be benefit, uh oh, for their benefit, and that they might have at all times the unalienable and indefensible right to alter their form of government in such a manner as they may think expedient. January 6th, I'm sorry, expedient, January 6th, I'm sorry, expedient, January 6th, anyone? Now, I just had to exhale because, ladies and gentlemen, what will it hurt you before you go filing a lawsuit in any court to write the court that has the judicial power and say, look, I'm trying to find a court with judicial power. I have a lawsuit I need to file. And I just, I, it's not just a, a lawsuit. I have a civil, it's not even a civil. I have a complaint, a redress petition I need to file. Uh-oh. Let's see if Connecticut has the right to redress. Connecticut? Let's R-E-D-R-E-S-S. -S. Connecticut, you got redress in here? Uh-oh, I don't see redress, y'all. Maybe he was right. <laughs> redress right. Ah, oh, you're so funny. You just so, oh, there it is right there. I just saw it. Yeah, you're so funny. You need to shut up. Okay, hold on. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I know you say who you're telling to shut up, and I'm telling your mama to shut up. Yeah, I know. You don't say what I say about your mama, and I just said what I just said, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen. The citizens have a right in a peaceful manner to assemble for their common good and to apply to these invested with the power of government for redress of grievance and other proper purposes by petition, address, or remonstrance. Ladies and gentlemen, so you are petitioning. You're not motioning. Stop following motions. Stop using their words. Use the words of this instrument. Okay? Use the word of this instrument. Okay? Use the words. Oh, I like this. No person shall be attended for treason or felony by the legislature. Hey, Trump, are you, are you listening to this? Yeah, they say that if you were in Connecticut, you wouldn't be going through that stuff you're going through. Yeah, because you couldn't be not by the legislature. They ain't got no power to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the impeachment is over. Congress doesn't have any authority or right to be holding no trial. Notice the trial is one-sided. Doesn't matter. It's all for show. Okay? It's all for show. Now, let me show you all this on Connecticut, too. You see where it says, witnesses. Witnesses. 
Now, hold on now. Witnesses. You see, it says witnesses. Whew, I'm so glad we got that out of the way. I thought it was going to say something like, you know, they didn't mean it. They meant witness. They, they didn't mean double. You know, they meant singular. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a life, liberty, and due process of law. This is not a 14th Amendment. Due process of law and equal protection of law is not the 14th Amendment, ladies and gentlemen. So stop letting them tell you that. You can exercise your rights under the state agreement. Okay, give me a second. I need to check this out. I'm listening to Let It Be in the background. Uh-oh. It don't have it, y'all. I just typed in witness. Let me type it in again. W-I-T-N-E-S-S. Okay, that's because I had the wrong word, but that's witnesses. Okay, let's see if we can find a witness by itself. Hey, I didn't ask for... Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Hey, I got words of wisdom. Let it be. See, witnesses. Witnesses. Hold on. Let's see if we can find witness by itself. Because y'all don't understand, never was it in this country that you could be tried and convicted at the mouth of one witness. A police officer, if he did not directly witness a crime, cannot testify. He has no first-hand knowledge, thus he has no ability to testify. A witness is someone who has first-hand knowledge and can testify by Afama David. And I'm looking at yo Constitution, Connecticut. And I'm looking right here, and I don't see no singular witness. Every witness is a witness, says, not a witness. And trust me, I know about witness, and I know about witnesses, all right? You know what I'm saying? Let it be. Let it be. Oh, yeah, you guys can't hear it. It's in the background. It's the music I'm playing for the doggies. Okay. Now, you might be able to hear it just vaguely, but the doggies are all asleep. And the music is to keep them calm, cool, and collected. Uh, what are you collecting them for? Oh, back pay and mortgages and rent and all that stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's there is no witness. Even in a criminal matter, there is no one witness. Now, the way you get this is because it says to be confronted by the witnesses against him. Okay, it doesn't say witness. Now, let's see. Let's do this. You see, I don't see testify against themselves. I'm looking for it, but I don't see it. You know, now see, it's supposed to be proof of evidence or the presumption so great. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the only constitution I've ever read where they had presumption. They literally used the word presumption. Presumption, they should already be calling that unconstitutional. There's no such thing as a presumption convicting someone. That's a denial of due process. Always has been. Well, anyway, I didn't call, uh, do this video to do that, to talk about that. I did this video to point out to you guys that you need to be going to the Supreme Court of the state, letting them know that you have a right to be before the judicial branch of government. And in exercising that right, you just tell them, please direct me to that, because I cannot find a court exercising judicial power. And I know that this court must know because the Constitution says that you are vested with that power. Uh-oh. And now they assign it. Now you know it's a court. And if you have to extend your authority to the court in order for them to hear this matter, that's what I ask that you do. That's what I did in New Mexico, and that's what the court did. They assigned it not to a clerk of a stupid court. They assigned it to a judge directly. You feel me? All right. Y'all have a good day, because I got to go.
I gotta go. Adios.